Uh, the plant forum is uh, for plants that people have growing at home, and they think that we haven't seen them before. There's something new or special or something that you should know about. And so they bring them in, or they bring them in to be identified or just to show off a bit. And it doesn't have to be exotic. It could be just anything that you're proud of growing. So our first plant, uh, Carol Bornstein brought in, this is uh, Leucophyllum frutescens, or Texas Ranger. I'm going to turn it so that people on Zoom can see the color of these flowers. Uh, these are fairly large drought tolerant shrubs from, I think it's from Texas and probably northern Mexico, if I remember correctly. And uh, this one, this is called Los Alamitos. This gets to eight feet tall. Some of them have more green foliage. Some have uh, the silvery gray foliage and the flowers range from a uh, pale like lilac mauve color to the darkest purples and when they're they, they can be a little just a big mass of foliage and then they burst into flower and you go wow that's you know it suddenly is, is a, a star in the landscape so a uh, very nice plant here good drought tolerant subject Next plant is brought in by April Curtis and this is Hoya carii variegata and uh, Hoyas actually, it says come from Southeast Asia. This one does. Uh, it's called uh, commonly called a wax plant. Some, sometimes it is. This one has variegated foliage and lovely sort of upside down heart shaped leaves. And there are flowers beginning right up in here. And I don't know on this particular one, where is April? Is it, it's a fragrant. Some of the Hoyas are very fragrant. Some of them have no fragrance at all. They smell like what they're called, wax plants. They're nothing. But some of them actually have a really uh, strong, sweet fragrance, mainly at night. Um, easy, fairly easy to grow as long as you don't overwater them. This must look funny on Zoom, just disappearing out of frame. Um, this is Tithonia rotundifolia, uh, what is it called, Mexican zinnia, I think, or Mexican sunflower. Uh, the Tithonias are a great annual to grow for a pollinator garden, or at least if you want to have butterflies. These are butterfly magnets, uh, this, this uh, composite flower with this wonderful center and nice landing pad. It's just, it seems to be just... Um, um, totally irresistible to butterflies. I remember the first time I ever grew this plant, I was weeding underneath it and I heard what sounded like playing cards falling. And I looked up and there were so many butterflies trying to get to one flower, they were slapping into each other. <laughs> was a butterfly slap down. So uh, fairly easy to grow in full sun. Although I think April said she had some difficulty this year with the heat that it took them out early and I think not as many survived. So, uh, but once you get them going, they're, they're usually pretty easy to grow um, and uh, really well worthwhile and really quite colorful. Uh, and you should look into this, uh, the, the genus actually has some perennial, uh, there are perennial tithonias that make really big shrubs with yellow sunflower type flowers on them. They're really quite nice. Ah, uh, this is called the, <laughs> this is commonly called the sandpaper vine, which I think is a horrible name. Uh, there's a lot of other common names for it, but this is Petrio uh, volubilis or volubilis or queen's wreath, it's sometimes called. It's a tropical uh, vine, uh, tro vine from tropical America. It's interesting that the, the name sandpaper comes from the, the texture of the foliage. It really does feel sandpapery or a bit like a cat's tongue almost. It's, it's kind of raspy. Uh, normally this would not be in bloom right now. This is a little unusual. Most of them have bloomed out by this time of year. The one, this, this is, it's not a fast growing vine. It's not, it won't overtake everything. If you, you can keep ahead of it fairly easily compared to some others. The thing about this vine is it will take any kind of heat that you expose it to. I have seen it growing out over asphalt roofs and just being totally happy and not burning at all as long as it's 
getting fairly regular water, uh, really stunning, uh, big, big uh, sca flower scapes on these things and um, really quite nice. And nice to see it this time of year. Uh, <laughs> I, I did love it. Some, sometimes when our, when our members write on these cards, they are, I don't know if they're being intentionally funny or not. Uh, Laura Bauer wrote about this aloe. Uh, somewhere in Africa. <laughs> it's just aloe species with a question mark. And she's asking if anyone can help identify this. It hasn't bloomed yet. So we don't know what the flower color is. And if you take a look at this, if you come up and take a look, it's the, the little uh, teeth along the edge of the leaves are really dark rust red, and they're very small, which might give some clue as to what species this is, or at least what its parentage is. Otherwise, it's a very nice, uh, the, the leaf blades are quite narrow. It's really quite, quite a nice, handsome looking thing. And our last plant this evening is Bursera, I think it's, um, is it phagoroides? Where's, where's Laura? What is the name of this? Is it phagoroides? All right, uh, Bursera, Bursera phagoroides. This is from Mexico. And it's one of, there's, there's a little X-wing starfighter <laughs> flying from the branches right here. So I'm trying not to drop that. Um, this is, it's, it's kind of reminiscent of the uh, oh, boojums and things like that, and some of the plants from Madagascar as well, uh, with this swollen trunk. Uh, but it's, it's a Bursaraceae has this, uh, Bursara refers to the peeling bark. So um, uh, in most of the places where these things grow, they, they call it the tourist tree whenever there's a bursera because the tourists sunburn and peel. <laughs> so it's a tourist tree, but um, the, quite often they look, uh, I mean, there's the, there are di many different genus of, of, of plants that look like this uh, with this drought adaptation. This is a really nice specimen though. So anyway, uh, thank you all for bringing in the forum plants. And now we'll turn it over to Laura, our new president.